this is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing my fancy booktube hat, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the books that I'm hoping to get around to reading sometime in the month of February. So the book that I'm currently reading right now that I'm about halfway through is The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. This is a book I've had out from the library for a very long time, renewing and renewing it. I'm finally reading it. This is a steampunk-inflected historical fiction um, that takes place in the 1880s in England with, like, fantastical clockworks. It's got a bit of a mystery going on in it, and it is so far offbeat and quirky in a way I'm really liking. After I finish that book, though, I'm going to try to binge through as many 2016 releases as I possibly can before the 14th, because currently the nominations are now open for the Booktube SFF Awards, but um, they close on the 14th, and I am slow to getting around to new releases. And there are some books that I may want to nominate that I'm anticipating that I'm going to like a lot more than some of the 2016 releases I've already read um, that I just haven't read yet and that I have sitting on my shelves. So I'm going to see how many of those I can get through by the 14th when the nominations close. The first of those is A Green and Ancient Light by Frederick S. Durbin. I believe this is a debut novel and it's supposed to be like good for uh, people who like Patricia McKillop and Peter S. Beagle, and I like both of these authors. This looks like a lovely lyrical fantasy story that takes place in, I think, World War II from what I understand. This is one of those books that just seems to appeal very strongly to sort of my little niche interest within the fantasy genre, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. The next one I've got here is Arabella of Mars by David D. Levine. As soon as I bought this, I dropped it and I ripped the cover, but that's okay because books are for using and books get, you know, banged up when you use them, so I I'm not that upset about it. This looks like exciting steampunk girl adventure in alternate history space. Basically it just looks like a lot of fun and it's going to be a series and the sequel is coming out in 2017. I want to know if this is a series that I want to be keeping my eye on. Next I've got a couple books out from the library. The first is Summer Long by Peter S. Beagle. Peter S. Beagle is of course um, best known as the author of The Last Unicorn. I've been wanting to read some of his more recent work, and this is his new novel that was released in 2016. Um, it's supposedly more of like a mature fantasy story from him. It's like an urban fantasy magical realism, as far as I can tell, that takes place in the Seattle area, which always earns points from Homesick Me. Um, I think it's supposed to have to do with, like, the seasons and the Persephone myth somehow, and it's not that long, so I hope I'll be able to get through it by the 14th. Another 2016 release that I have out from the library that I'm not anticipating that I'll get read by the 14th, um, but I am going to read it this month anyway because the library and it needs to go back, is Den of Wolves by Juliette Morillier. This is the third and final book in her Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy. This is a historical fae fantasy series that uh, involves a bit of um, a bit of a fantasy mystery in each book, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this story arc comes to a close. Okay, addendum time, addendum time. It is now a couple days after I filmed that first portion of my TBR for February, and I have just learned um, a little belatedly that there's a readathon coming up uh, starting tomorrow the 6th that I would really like to participate in. This readathon is the TBR Takedown readathon, and I am jumping right in here last minute because why the heck not? Little reading update, between the time I filmed the main portion of this TBR and now I did finish The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and I am now reading A Green and Ancient Light. Um, I am going to try to finish this before I start on the TBR takedown books. This isn't going to meet any of those challenges. So this is going to eat into the readathon time a little bit unless I can finish it tonight, which I don't think I'm going to do. But oh well, that's what you get for participating in readathon super last minute. So TBR takedown is running from February 6th through 12th. Um, and it is hosted by Shannon from the channel Leading Lights. It is hosted, though, through the Readathon's own Twitter account, so I'll link that down below for you. There are five challenges. I am making no promises about uh, meeting all of them, 
but I think I can uh, pick books for each of these challenges that I would really like to get to in this first half of the month. Most of these are going to fit my goal of reading 2016 SFF releases before nominations for the Booktube SFF Awards close, but the first challenge is to pick a book that's been on your TBR shelf for more than a year, so this is the one exception to that general rule. And for this I'm going to be reading Castle in the Air by Diana Wynne Jones. This is the sequel to Howl's Moving Castle. This isn't on my Goodreads TBR shelf, but my Goodreads TBR shelf is not my comprehensive TBR by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this has been on my physical shelf for more than a year. I know that I purchased this copy used before I started booktube, and I have been on booktube for more than a year, so I know that I've had this for that long. I reread Howl's Moving Castle for the first time since my childhood um, this past year in 2016. I have never read this book, though. And this is actually a current pick for a Goodreads group that I'm a member of called Into the Forest um, that reads three books at a time, and I like to be able to join in one of their uh, read-along discussions for at least one of the books that they're reading for every topic, and so I was already hoping to get to this uh, while it was a current read for the group. Um, I just didn't commit to it earlier in my TBR video because I didn't want to overcommit myself, but this was already sort of on my planned list for February. The second challenge is to read a book from your most recent book haul. My most recent book haul was the last video I uploaded. There was, in fact, one 2016 SFF release in that book haul, and that is the audiobook of The Secret Horses of Briar Hill, which is a middle grade fantasy novel. I haven't yet read any middle grade SFF releases from 2016, uh, which is too bad because I really like middle grade, and that's, I think, a new category this year in the Booktube SFF Award, so I would like to have something to nominate for it. This is a five-hour long audiobook, and super conveniently, I happen to have a five-hour plane flight on Saturday the 11th, which is within uh, the dates of this readathon. So I have a plan. Can you tell what my plan is? The third challenge is to read a first book in a series. For this one, I'm picking one that I already uh, committed to in my first part of the book haul, which is Arabella of Mars, as I mentioned. Uh, one of the reasons I want to read this now is because there is a second book in this series, a sequel to this, coming out in 2017, and I want to know if I should get pumped for it. The fourth challenge is to catch up on a series. So. Um, Castle in the Air as a sequel would technically count. Um, if I have time, though, I've got another book that I could read for this that would be another middle grade. Um, not technically a series, but these are companion books, and I've been reading them in publication order, so if I end up with some extra time on my plate, I can read When the Sea Turned to Silver by Grace Lynn, which is another 2016 middle grade release. This is a companion novel to Where the Mountain Meets the Moon and Starry River of the Sky, both of which I really liked. So I have confidence that if I can read this by the 14th, this will be a book that I will want to nominate for the Booktube SFF Awards. I also know that the first two books have been really quick reads for me, so I'm expecting this one will be as well. That said, it's a little chunky in hardcover, and I'd rather not travel with it, so we'll see. And then the fifth and final challenge is to read a book that's out of your comfort zone. For this one, I have a novella, Hammers on Bone by Cassandra Kaw. This is like a Lovecraftian horror thing, which is totally out of my comfort zone. Um, you may have seen this uh, when I hauled it. If not, I'll tell you the story. When I won a Goodreads giveaway for an arc of Binti Home, which I have read and I loved, there will be a review soon, I promise. Um, when I won that Goodreads giveaway, they ended up sending me that book that I won along with two other Tor.com novellas. This was one of them. It is not otherwise a book that I would have ever picked up for myself, but it has gotten some very positive reviews. These novellas are sort of like 
my go-to books for readathons, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to squeak this one in. If it ends up pleasantly surprising me and I, it turns out that I like Lovecraftian horror, um, this would be eligible for the BookTube SFF Awards in the short works category. So there's my super last minute TBR for the uh, TBR Takedown Readathon. Back to regularly scheduled programming. If you've got any comments on any of these books, please let me know. This is kind of a diversion from regularly scheduled reading for me to read this many new releases all at once, um, so that should be fun. Anyhow, I hope you're all doing well. Um, feel free to comment. Bye for now.